you have this culture of secrecy and a culture that really protects its own. NPR's Madeline Barron has broken through that culture, and it all began a year ago with a call from Jennifer Hasselberger, an expert on church law who resigned from the archdiocese. Would any of this have come out? She was a really key source for us because what she did and what was so unprecedented is that she brought this insider knowledge. This is not a normal thing for someone in the Catholic hierarchy to do. She became Barron's guide in uncovering thousands of pages of smoking gun documents, leading to more victims and more offending priests. All of it culminating this week in an hour-long documentary, Betrayed by Silence. And he whispered in my ear, God wants you to do this for me. And that kind of froze me. And the next thing I knew, my, my pants were off and he was raping me. Barron traces a cover-up that spans decades across three archbishops. Flynn is fascinating in this because he was at ground zero of the clergy abuse scandal. Archbishop Harry Flynn had a reputation as a reformer, but Barron exposes that as a myth. The father of several victims, three of the sons had been abused by a priest, said, Flynn told me that he was there to protect the church. Then there's former Vicar General Kevin McDonough, who kept moving pedophile priests to different parishes, like a shell game. In one of the documents, one of the most striking documents, he says, look, I never really understood how to follow this. And the reason that he gave is because he missed the national training because of a snowstorm. And yet he's the point person in the archdiocese yes. for this. Yes, yes. The archdiocese responds to Barron's reporting these days only in press releases, always implying it's old news. They've been saying that for 30 years. What we found in our reporting is that you see these cycles where you have a crisis, promises then of new policies, pledges to do better in the future, and then you just find another crisis. And many people are wondering how long Archbishop Neinstead can hold on. We've certainly seen in the last two or three weeks in particular big donors coming forward saying that Neinstead should resign in a way that hasn't happened before. So there's definitely more pressure on him now than there has been, I think, at any point in the past year to step aside. Ultimately, though, that is the decision of Pope Francis. It's a decision made at the very top. long before 2002, and the one was the unfortunate one with Curtis Wilmeyer, whom when I made him pastor, I had no idea, no idea that he would have been a harm to children.